Let's go over the operations of your ground control travel trailer electrical leveling system. Let's get started. So customer operations has four stages, which is exactly like your camping trip. And those are unhitching the unit is stage one. Stage two is auto leveling the unit so you can enjoy that camping trip. But once your camping trip is done, stage three is rehitching the unit to the tow vehicle. And then finally retracting all those jacks so you can drive down the road safely. So that first stage is unhitching. We're gonna pull that vehicle onto that perfect camp spot Make sure the train is somewhat level. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have shore power plugged in, and that's going to give electricity to the unit. And finally, you're gonna make sure that your battery has a full charge on it. Now, these jacks are simulating our tow vehicle. So let's go get this unit unhitched. Now you have a couple different options when it comes to unhitching your tow vehicle from your camper. And those are your tongue jack or your auto level control touchpad. But we're gonna focus here on the tongue jack. So you have two toggles on the tongue jack that operate it. First one here is just a light and that'll give you the ability to unhitch and hitch at nighttime. Um, but the other one is your retract extend button. So on that, you can extend the, the tongue jack manually just by selecting that and holding it until the tongue jack drives down to the ground and pushes it off your, your tow vehicle. Or you also have an auto extend feature that you can select by pushing the extend button and listening for the motor engagement once, twice, and then press and hold that for five seconds. And once that's past your five seconds, that'll actually go into an auto extend feature and that'll automatically drive that leg down to the ground and push it off your tow vehicle. Now at the end of this, you might have to press the extend button a little bit to get it actually off the hitch. Now for the last thing, I selected that. While it's in sequence, if you realize you forgot something or you have to, to stop that feature, you can select the auto or retract button and it'll actually abort the sequence. Now that we understand the tongue jack, let's go over to the auto level control pad and actually lift this off our tow vehicle. So here we have the auto level control touch pad and we're gonna need to turn this on and we do that by selecting both arrows at the same time until the green LED illuminates and it's a steady green. Now, we're going to extend that tongue jack down to the ground and lift it up off the tow vehicle. So we do that by selecting the up arrow and holding it. And that's going to actually extend the tongue jack down. Now, the auto level control touchpad doesn't have the auto extend feature built in like the tongue jack does. So you're gonna have to hold it. Now that the coupler is lifted off the tow vehicle, we can remove the tow vehicle and park it at a safe distance. Next, we're gonna to go to stage two, which is your auto level sequence. But before we do that, I wanna point out that before you actually select the auto level button, you're gonna want the front of the coach to be just above level. This is going to record in the system when you select the auto level button. So when you go to the hitch height selection in the third stage, it's gonna actually return to that exact position so you can hook up your tow vehicle. Now, as you can see, our coach here is actually above level. So let's go ahead and initiate that sequence.
Now that we're level, let's go ahead and enjoy that camping trip. Now it's time to leave, so let's pack up and go to stage three, which is rehitching. Let's head over to the auto level control pad. Now before you bring your tow vehicle back to the camper, let's go ahead and select hitch height. So you might have to turn it back on by hitting the up and down arrow until the green LED is back lit. Now select hitch height. Now we're going to go ahead and back that tow vehicle underneath your coupler and manually retract this down until you get a good seat on that coupler. Now we have our jack stands here, so when it's on the jack stands, that's going to simulate the tow vehicle. Okay, now we're going into stage four, and that is retracting the tongue jack all the way up. Now that we have all the jacks fully retracted, we can drive down the road safely and get home. The One Control touch panel option gives you two different interfaces to display error codes and system status. You have the One Control touch panel that gives you the full comprehensive list of error codes and you have a auto leveling control pad that gives you system status with a red green LED indicator. Now let's get into the auto leveling control pad. So here we have the one LED on the auto leveling control pad and it is going to be either red or green or off. So off means that the touch panel is either locked or, it's, or the system is actually off. Solid green means that it's active, that you're on and ready to go. Your blinking green means that the jacks are moving in some type of a sequence, whether you're auto leveling or you're moving the jacks somehow manually. Solid red means that you have that low battery indicator, means that your, your average 12.6, it's getting below that, you're gonna to need to charge that battery up. Your blinking red is going to indicate that you have an active error code on one of the jacks or the system. And at that point, then you're going to refer to the one control touch panel. So here we have a list of all of the error codes you might see in the field, so let's go through those individually. So first one, we have excess angle. That basically means 
that you have an unsecure leveling sensor, so make sure that that's tight on the frame, or you're just parked on an uneven slope, so just repark the RV and you should be good to go. Next one is excessive angle. So excessive angle is a little different. That is, if you're in manual mode and you are, are maneuvering the jacks, there's an anti-twist feature built into the system that will stop you from damaging your RV. So if you get that, all you have to do is stop the manual operation and that will reset it. Next one is bad calibration. That just means that you need to reset your zero point. Um, next, feature disabled. So that's a little bit more complicated. That's when you select the hitch recognition and you're perhaps, uh, when you selected auto level originally, when you auto leveled your unit and the unit was below the level point, as a safety mechanism, it's not going to go back to hitch recognition. It will not um, uh, allow you to hook up your tow vehicle if, the, if your RV is below level. So it's going to pop that feature disabled error. So what you do there is you just reperform the auto level at a, a, a higher than level area. So you should be good to go or reset the zero point. Next one is low voltage. Low voltage means that your battery power has dropped below 9.5 volts and it's going to create a low voltage. What you can do is make sure the wiring is good or just give you get a, either a new battery or recharge that battery. So the out of stroke error, that means that, again, you possibly might have that unsecure leveling sensor, so make sure that that's secure to the frame or you're in a really uneven slope where you parked it, so just repark the RV and should be good to go on that one too. Um, next, we have external sensor. You have bad connection or wiring. Replace or repair the connection to the remote sensor, and that is your uh, leveling sensor. Next one is jack timeout. There is a sequence of leveling that the jacks go through specifically, and there's a time limit on it. If it maneuvers past that, you're gonna get that time out. All you have to do is check the disposition of the jacks and then just re-level it. Next one is auto level failure. Again, make sure that that level sensor, leveling sensor is secure to the frame, or this is probably gonna be your more common one is your voltage drop below the uh, 12 volts. Next one is function aborted. Built into the system, if you touch any of the buttons while it's in a sequence, it's going to put it in that automatic panic and give you a function aborted. All you have to do is just restart the sequence. Your hull power short, the hull effect wiring in the system has a short in the power ground, or the, I'm sorry, the power wire. So what you're gonna do there is you're going to troubleshoot that. We'll go, the, go over that in a little bit. Um, can't complete level in this location. The trailer's parked on a steep incline during auto level. It's self-explanatory, just relocate the trailer. There are two different methods that you can perform manual override on these C-Jacks. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the jack harnesses from the motor. Now that we have those jack harnesses disconnected from the motor, we can access the gearbox using a 3 8 inch drive extension and sliding that through the housing until it engages with the gearbox. Now, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise depending upon whether you want to drive that up or down. The other method of manual override on these C-Jacks is to use a three-quarter inch socket on this three-quarter inch drive nut on the back of the jack. So you can just run it counterclockwise or, or clockwise depending upon whether you want to move the jack up or down. Next we're going to go over the ground control travel trailer power tongue jack manual override. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to chalk the tires on the RV for safety. 
Then you're going to come down here to the power and ground connector on the power tongue jack and disconnect it and disconnect the communication wire as well. Then lastly here, you're gonna come to the fuse on the power wire power of wire the power tongue and jack and pull that fuse, fuse out as well. So what that's gonna do is it's going to remove the electricity from the power tongue jack. Then you're gonna to wanna to pull this rubber cap off the top and insert this three quarter inch socket onto the three quarter inch nut and turn it counterclockwise or clockwise depending upon whether you're going to retract or extend the power tongue jack. Let's go ahead and program your zero point. So typically the OEM delivers the unit with a zero point programmed into it. However, there are certain situations that the end user will want to program their own zero point, And that is in the troubleshooting process or if your eggs are rolling off your counter, you're gonna to wanna to set your own custom zero point for your system. Let's go inside the RV and I'll show you how to set zero point. Now, here's your one control touch panel. Now, there's a few different versions out there. On this one, you're going to select leveler six times until you get that advanced feature warning. Basically, that's all it's saying is, is that you're in an advanced feature and be careful, but we obviously know that. So we then select yes. Now you can see where it's in zero mode setup. On other versions, you'll tap the connected icon six times until the options gear icon appears. Then you'll select that to enter the zero point mode screen. Once you're in the zero point mode screen, the process is the same. Now we're going to go ahead and select enter. And now you have the option of moving the jacks around. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside the unit and make sure that the unit is level. Now you're gonna to want to put that level in the doorway flat on the ground and take a look at the bubble and make sure this is where you want it. Now, if you want it to be a little bit high on the front or a little bit back, that doesn't matter. This is your level, not necessarily perfectly level based on the bubble. This is your custom level. I actually want to raise the rear of the unit up a little bit based on how my water drains in my shower. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to raise the rear up. So I'm going to select plus and then press rear. And I'm going to raise that rear up a little bit and make that bubble where I want it. Okay, now let's go check it. Perfect, now I have it perfectly level based on what I need. So now I'm gonna go back in and set that zero point. I'm gonna select enter and you're gonna see zero point stability check. Don't move while this is working. And then it's gonna say zero point set. And, I, and now your zero point is set and you can auto level it and do all the other sequences necessary. Let's talk about maintenance of your system. Now for optimal performance, the Ground Control TT system requires that you maintain those batteries at full voltage and that you're utilizing shore power. The system voltage can be monitored at the One Control touch panel. This will allow you to see the battery's performance under the load of operation. Then you're gonna to wanna to check the terminals at the battery and the connectors at your controller and the C-jacks for corrosion, paying attention to loose or damaged connectors. Next, you're gonna to wanna to inspect all the moving parts on the jacks and remove all the dirt, debris, and grease from them. Once you get all those moving parts cleaned up, you're gonna to wanna to add a thin layer of white lithium grease to the C-jacks and a thin layer of dry grease like quick lube to your tongue jack. This concludes the owner and aftermarket video for the ground control travel trailer with the one control touch panel.